Good evening, I'm Robert Hannon, and I'll be uh, moderating this evening, and our guest, um, Wendy Dominique, we'll get to in just a minute, but as you know, if you've been to several of these, I always urge people to silence their phone, either put them on airplane mode or uh, turn them off. We've got a number of wonderful events taking place this week in this venue, besides Wendy tonight, tomorrow evening on the Healthy Living series is Fairbanks as we age, pieces of the livability pie. And that's a no calorie pie, I'm guessing. So that's gonna help. And then on Wednesday, longevity and senescence are maximum lifespans of whales longer than we believe. That's on the Discover Alaska here in this venue on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, of course, Music in the Garden features headbolt heaters and the Fairbanks Community Jazz Band. So that should be terrific. So a um, lot to look forward to. UAF acknowledges the Alaska Native Nations upon whose ancestral lands our campuses reside. Our Trothiata campus is located on the ancestral lands of the Diné people of the lower Tanana River. And let me introduce our guest. Wendy Dominique was born in Annapolis, Maryland. She says she was raised by the best single mom in the world. She came to Alaska in 1989 after a tour in Germany were active with her active duty military husband. They have three boys, Reggie, Rashad, and Rolando. Wendy worked for the federal government in several positions for over 32 years. In 2003, Wendy ran for a position on the Fairbanks North Star Borough School Board against an incumbent, and she won. That began a record-setting 17 years of service on that body. She says one of her goals was to ensure every student was treated equitably, and she wanted to create avenues for parents to register their complaints and ensure they were reviewed and listened to. She helped in hiring five superintendents. In 2018, Wendy was named a woman of distinction by the Fathers North Girl Scout Council. She now works part-time here at UAF and continues working with the Fairbanks School District. And she's finishing up um, her bachelor's degree. So please welcome Wendy Dominique. <laughs> now, Wendy, you and I share a common uh, thing that we were both raised by single moms. And you call yours the best. And uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but, Tell me why. You say there are four, in, uh, four kids in the family. Um, so where are you in the birth order? Second. Second. Second oldest. 
Okay. And uh, are they still around? Do you still keep in contact? That's great. Well, now you talk about Annapolis, Maryland. Tell me, what was it like growing up? What do you remember from your, your time there? Well, you, you said at one point, I think, that you always wanted to be a teacher. Yeah. Did you have any mentors that sort of showed you what a great teacher looked like or acted like?
Well, that must have been a huge help. For Well, you know, at this point, you talked about the integration of the schools, but this is the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. How did that play out for Annapolis? Were things tense, or was everything handled pretty much in stride? It was just kind of horrific. Yeah, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you also worked for the federal government, mm -hmm. and you met your uh, husband. Mm -hmm. He was a service member? Yes. Okay, so tell me about Germany. What was it about Germany that you responded to? And was there a particular memory you had? Was it uh, the, the food, the, the artwork, the mountains? The... No. <laughs> no, I don't no. drink beer. <laughs> no, um, I, I don't remember any one particular thing. We didn't have a tradition there. Yeah, different I just like being in the country and yeah. being able to. The people were really nice. I had a cousin that was in the military over there at the time, too. But he was in. Vilsack was a ways away from us. He came down and visited us a few times. Mm -hmm. He ended up marrying a German lady. He was there for a long time. He was in, in um, Germany for about 30 years, I think it was. After he even retired, he stayed there in Germany. He just came back maybe 10 or 15 years ago. 
And that was because the wall, whenever the wall came down, it was so miserable there. Yeah. And they live in Maryland now, too. Wow. Have you been, I have to ask, has Annapolis changed much? Have you oh. been there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I guess it's like back all our hometowns are different from. Oh my goodness, okay. the traffic, because I call my. Well, you're mentioning traffic is a good segue to your time in San Francisco, <laughs> where you. Had an interesting experience on the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> Few people can boast it. <laughs> Tell me about that. Was this the driver just yelling out the window or he had a, yeah, a megaphone? Oh, a PA system. San Francisco is a pretty town, but pricey. Oh, yeah. We Yeah. You have to mortgage your house. <laughs> 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 yeah. Now, in eighty nine. You come up to Fairbanks. Mm -hmm. You want to share any first impressions? Tell me what that was like.
Well, we're going to get to the school board in just a minute, but I have a couple of other questions I want to get to. First off, you know, you were at the same time raising this family, you were also working mm -hmm. and doing some really interesting work. Tell me some of the job experiences that you did working uh, for the government while during this period. Do any stand out for you? Well, I wanted to ask that question because when we get to your school board, it seems having all those skills, especially the interpersonal, with helping people, mm -hmm. probably played a role when you got voted into office. But one other question. Mm -hmm. Your husband's a sports fanatic. Yes. Could it be anything that your son got became a, a professional football player? Yeah. <laughs>
It's just a great touch. That sounds like a family, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's a remarkable story. It is. Yeah. It was great. And your other two boys, successful, they have their own children now. I mean, I, I have a feeling that's every parent's wish, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Someone once told me, you're only as happy as your least happy child. <laughs> yeah. And then we're unhappy times. Well, let's get you to the school board. And um, what, besides Dorothy, what <laughs> prompted you to decide to run? It was a, a, a disciplinary issue. Yeah.
I got to hear. Well, walk me through that first election. I mean, unseating an incumbent isn't easy. Mm -hmm. And so, did you have a, somebody to help manage your your uh, campaign? Campaign. Mm -hmm. that just So, as we know, Fairbanksans aren't shy about expressing things when they're upset. But this is particularly true for people in office, and especially the school board. Mm -hmm. So, you have the distinction of being the longest running or serving member of the school board. And so, I'm going to walk you through. I know I want to talk about COVID, because that sort of knocked everybody sideways. And it's sort of like we're all trying to navigate this terrible situation, but I know it was particularly troublesome in the schools. But before we get to that point, are there times, Wendy, uh, that stick out in your mind or lessons on working with administration uh, and working as a body that jump out at you?
you know, that must have been very hard. It's awfully hard to sometimes, you know, because there's all that pressure. Oh, just get it over with quick. This yes. is what we do. Let's get it through. That's but right. you really wanted to engage in the human interaction there. Yeah. Do you think after that 17 years that you were able to put in place a, a process that was more accommodating that way? You, you made the comment that you think it's so important now, based on that experience, to work with the superintendent and administration, but also to listen.
Well, yeah, and you know, it's every parent is is so passionate or should be so mm -hmm. passionate about their, their kids and mm -hmm. the health. But I think during COVID, we encountered something new, and that was public health became politicized and it yes. was polarized, and there were ang there was anger, there was misinformation. And so that must have put additional pressure on you as a school board member. Would I be right? Other's throats. Yeah, I remember. It was horrible. Yeah. Do you think we learned any lessons from that? Oh, we learned lots of lessons. We had to have a book. We had to have a book. Lessons learned. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Don't do this. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. They have a great one to refer back to and all types of things. I mean, even the funding. It was a horrific thing. I mean, we got all this money flowing in and everybody wanted some of it. And who do you get what to, you know? So we had to work with the classrooms first, and then the other areas and whatever. But it was horrific. Well, I think we should have something like a purple heart. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've been through a war. <laughs> somebody outside listening to those meetings. It was oh, I just know. unbelievable. I know. Well, listen, I, I want to acknowledge that your service to the community didn't stop with just the school district. Tell me about the J.P. Jones Community Center and your work there.
You know, um, when you retired from your working for the federal government, uh, people my age often say, if you're still working, you failed retirement. Um, they're kidding, of course. But it sounds like you failed retirement. Oh, I'm from day one. Because <laughs> you started working up here at the university. Yeah, but the university job. But was it um, your years of, well, we'll get to the school district, which you also didn't leave <laughs> in a funny way, but was it working, was the working environment and, and things up at the U here different from what your experience down in the school district? Well, you also um, have, are teaching in the school district yeah. um, at, on an on-call basis, is that right? Whenever I want to Substitute go. teacher. Yeah. Whenever you want to go. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm wondering, for somebody who wanted to be a teacher all her life, do you like it now that you do it? I Yeah. yeah, and tell me what do you think the biggest gift a teacher gives the student? Do you think it's that spark of you you always love learning? Is it passing on that spark of loving learning? <laughs> Well, my one time teaching uh, junior high, it was Lord of the Flies all over again, and I was I was piggy, you know. I, I'm surprised I made it out there alive. But um, I do want to about this time every uh, event. I like to open it up to questions, but I also want people to sort of reflect on what they see ahead based on what they've given to the community, what their hopes are. So I want to ask you, Wendy, what, do you have any hopes for our community? What do you see ahead? Things we should, as a community, keep in mind.
Okay. Well, um, I'm going to open up the questions now to the uh, audience. And does anybody? There's a ringer back there. Michelle? Wendy, could you talk about your reading program and where that came from? The reading program and where it came from. <coughs> Um, I had this idea for a long time by um, being in the schools as much as I was, and then when it came out how, how badly our kids are not reading well, I came up with this program, um, it's called uh, Almore Mentoring and Tutoring Program, and I didn't know how to implement it into our schools, and it was a lady named Carla McQuan that worked in the school district. I went and talked with her about my idea because I really wanted to have it at several different schools at the same time as possible. And um, she came up with the idea that um, I could do it an hour a day at different schools and I was looking to do it <coughs> for volunteers. And it worked very well in the beginning, but then people decided that they needed money. And I wrote to the legislature and I had it for two years, basically. And wrote to the legislator to get funding, because you know legislators have extra money, same way the school district has extra money. And I wrote them, wrote my program up, sent it to them, and I almost had the money. But the particular legislator stated that he sent it to the school district, and they said that I had to apply for it like everybody else applied. So I kind of got upset behind it, but I know I'm going to get money again and get my program up and going again. Because I went to the school, we would go and sit and read with kids, several kids, for like 15 minutes. And as we read with them, and they read to us, each one of those kids increased their reading ability. I didn't have a complaint from not one of the schools that we had somebody at. We had grandparents and friends that you know, weren't working during the day, and that was doing it, and they basically said they needed more income, so they couldn't do it for free anymore, so. I was doing it by myself before. Yes? What, you, were, you said you're finishing your degree now at the, here at UAF? I'm getting ready to start registering. <laughs> well, I have my, my associate's degree. I just got finished with that. Okay. Um, but I'm getting ready to do my bachelor's, yes. Have you thought about going into the School of Education? To do teaching? Teacher, getting a teaching certificate. Oh, I could get a teaching certificate without a problem. But I, okay. I kind of want business administration. I, I'll work that way, too. If they can give me where I don't have to pay as much, for a teacher's certificate versus a business associate. Yes, I'll go that route for sure. I know Amy Winlow very well. Okay. <laughs> well, seeing no more questions, I want to thank you, Wendy Dominique. And we have a special cake out there. Yes, I saw that cake. Yeah. It's nice. So, a warm welcome.